Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made me heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave me. Instead, and by the command of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 1. The Old Testament reading for the baptism of our Lord. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Praise Thanks be God. to God. The epistle, epistle is from Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and they and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, after me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Amen. 
We confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made a man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is the worship and glorified, who is told by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge my baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. Amen. Maybe seated and the children can come forward with the message. It's okay. <laughs> well, good morning. I've, we've got we've got we've got something special, a special celebration today, and it's a, it's about here. You want something? Here, here, yeah, here, Ben. And uh, um, it was uh, the baptism where where Jesus got baptized. Baptism of our Lord. Here, here's a here's a uh, artist rendition of Jesus in the Jordan River getting baptized, and and uh, and there there's there's there was uh, some something God said to Jesus, and and there's sometimes we we're told things by our parents, right? And and there's there's encouraging words. There's sometimes our parents. Well, sometimes they have to get after us, right? Like you were naughty, right? <laughs> but there's other times when they say, you did a great job, right? You did a great job. You cleaning up, helping out. You did a great job. And, and uh, you're, you're a good kid. Thank you for doing that. You know, and, and those, are, those are encouraging words where they say nice things about us. And it feels good, doesn't it? And, and uh, it feels just as bad when they have to get after us, right? <laughs> we feel bad. And, uh, but, but there's encouraging words. And here was Jesus, and, and he got baptized. And you know what? There was a voice came from heaven. There's this voice came from heaven. And, and, uh, and, and it said, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. And everybody was like, oh, my goodness. What was that? And that was, that was God the Father saying, I'm proud of you to Jesus, right? And, and, uh, and, and we, do, we do naughty things sometimes as, as kids or even adults do naughty things. And, and, uh, and, and we know that, that that disappoints God, right? It disappoints us too. And, uh, but you know what? God also speaks to us when... when because we've, we've been forgiven. He says, You're forg when we confess our sins, he forgives us. And, and he can say the same thing about us as he said about Jesus. You are my beloved child. With you, I am well pleased. That's what God says to us. And, and it, it makes us feel good, doesn't it? And uh, to know that God, God loves us. And, and, and uh, because of Jesus... Our sins are washed away, and he's, he's proud of us, right? Just as he's proud of Jesus. We'll pray. You want to pray with me? We'll pray. Thank you, God, for making us your children. And thank you for telling us that you love us. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up. <laughs>
grace to you, the peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We hear again from the gospel just read, In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. You know, it had been five centuries since a, a prophet's voice had been heard in Israel. And now there was this son of a high priest, John, out in the Judean desert. He wore crude clothes made from camel's hair, a leather belt tied around his waist. And he lived on a diet of locusts and wild honey. He resembled another prophet before him, Elijah. And he had the same message. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And you know, in the in Jesus' day, in John's day, the, at this time, uh, the uh, baptism of repentance was a common practice. Uh, priests would do this as they began their service in the temple. Once a year, they would go and work in the temple for a month. They had, they had a, a groups of priests divided up into 12 sections, and they'd come for a, a, a month. And before they began their service, there was this washing or baptism of repentance. They would recite the, the penitential psalms, like Psalm 38 or Psalm 51, as they washed and then they put on their white garments and begin their service in the temple. Uh, synagogues had these um, either little like baptismals um, or, or even uh, full body ones. I mean, uh, baths where you could walk down into. And again, they would, they would uh, um, it was a confession of sins and this washing away of sins. Later... Jesus uses that for Christian baptism, but now it was done not only repenting of your sins, but done in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There were, there were thousands of Jews going out to uh, be baptized by John. Some estimates around 200,000 or more. It was quite, quite a... Um, Quite an experience. All these people going down to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. And now Jesus came and asked to be baptized. And John's wondering, what for? He introduces, introduces Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Why does he need to have this washing of repentance? Well, he did that in our place for us. As he does, his whole life was lived in our place on our behalf. But in baptism, so Jesus is baptized for us by proxy. <laughs> baptism is a, a call to repentance. And, it, and, and uh, this... Acknowledging that we're sinners in need of God's grace and forgiveness. Something we do in our baptisms. Or is done on our behalf as if we're baptized as, as children. And so even as babies, there's that acknowledgement that they're sinners. And I've heard way more than, than I, I care to uh, tell. How many times I've heard people say, but babies are so innocent. Well, yeah, we're born sinners before we've done anything. It's because of our, our the inherited sin from Adam that we're sinners. And by the way, babies aren't all that innocent. I've raised a, a couple myself. <laughs> uh, they're, they're quite self-centered. <laughs> and that's what God's in the business of curing us from, that self-centeredness throughout our lives. But 
every Sunday begins with that, that remembrance of our baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There's, there's this mini baptismal renewal every Sunday. Following those, those words that were spoken over us at our baptism is the confession and absolution. Acknowledging our sins and hearing again that God has forgiven our sins and washed them away. Baptism is an ongoing experience. Uh, I've spent a lot of time studying grammar and languages, and I've, I've shared this before, and I'll share it again. But there, the Greek had, Greek language has had three forms of past tense, and and the words will be spelled differently when they're in each of these different forms of past tense. And there's this unique form of past tense known only to Greek in, in Greek in the Greek language, where it's something that happened in the past, but is happening in the present. <laughs> so you'd spell something differently if you, you'd spell it differently if you were said that, that you were married uh, 30 years ago. You were married, you are married. It's both something that happened in the past, but is still happening in the present. When it talks about baptism, it uses this unique form of past tense that's also in the present. You were baptized, you're being baptized. Well, what does that mean? Well, there's this ongoing dying and rising with Christ. There's that ongoing uh, washing away of sins that continues throughout our lives. And in this mystery called holy baptism... We're connected to Jesus, his baptism, his perfect life, his suffering and death on the cross, and his resurrection. In fact, in scripture, it says we're clothed with, in baptism, we're clothed with Christ's righteousness. Are these pure white garments, and, and that's a, a tradition you don't see much of nowadays, but there's the white baptismal garment that, that often babies were, were given at their baptism. Um, adults could wear a white garment when they're, when they're baptized, Some, symbolizing that, that righteousness that we're clothed with in baptism, Christ's righteousness. And just as the baptiz at Jesus' baptism, this began his public ministry. And, and our baptism begins our service for God and others. Our life as disciples. You know, I, I, grew, I didn't grow up Lutheran. I went to several different churches growing up and uh, realized that, you know, Baptists, Baptists and, and Pentecostals and other churches, there's all, all these churches that call themselves non-denominational. They're either Pentecostal or Baptist. And uh, they, they like to point to their confession of faith, where they, they ask Jesus to come into their hearts. What they did, the decision they made. And we as, as Lutheran Christians also ask Jesus to be Lord of our lives. But we point to our baptism, where, where God washed away our sins. Where this, this work of God, that this mystery of the washing away of sins through water and the word and holy baptism. Because we tend to point to Jesus and what he's done. It's not that these other folks don't ever point to Jesus. It's just the reason they emphasize the decision they made because it, it's, it's something they did. Where we emphasize what God did in holy baptism. Baptism also brings us into the family of God, into the church. We're made part of the invisible body of Christ, the universal church, made up of all true believers. We're born again, born from above. Both and. Through water and the word, so we become God's children. The Holy Spirit descends on us. The Holy Spirit's given to us in holy baptism. Just as the, the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus in a more dramatic way, as a visible, visibly as a dove, 
The Holy Spirit comes to us in holy baptism, giving us the gift of faith, enabling us to believe in Jesus as our Savior. We're made part of something bigger than us, the church. You know, we're connected to Christ and His work of redemption through our confession by us or on our behalf by our parents and sponsors at our baptism. We're connected to Jesus' baptism and His perfect life lived on our behalf. We're also connected to His suffering and death on the cross for our sins. Jesus' baptism marked the beginning of his public ministry, God and others. And, and for, for us, baptism is the beginning of a life lived for God and others. And we realize what, what Jesus did for us, his, his, his baptism, his perfect life, his suffering and death, his resurrection for us. We can't help but want to gather together to worship him, to thank him, to receive his gifts. And to serve others. May God continue to, to transform us as daily we remember our baptisms. Where God washed away our sins through water and the word. And this mystery called holy baptism. May it lead to lives lived in worship for God and in service to others. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all human understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Life everlasting. Amen. Lord of all creation, you spoke all creation into being, beginning with light. In this epiphany season and all our days, grant us faith to see the light of your providing hand, the guidance of the light of your word, and our Savior as the light of the world. Help us to shine your light of truth and grace to this dark world, that others may know you and rejoice in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord of all grace, though, though our many sins and shortcomings weigh heavily, heavy on our hearts, you come to us in your means of grace and give new life. Help us to daily remember our baptism and to daily rejoice in our identity as your own children and part of your family. With Christ as the head, bless this family of believers within your church, that through worship and fellowship all may be blessed with encouragement, support, service, and a zeal for growing in and sharing your word. Bless all families and homes that parents and children may remain steadfast in faith, trusting in you above all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord of all comfort, following the baptism of Jesus, he would seek the lost, heal the sick, and show compassion to all. Enable us in boldness and confidence to proclaim the wonders of him, who has called us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. Use our words and actions to be a blessing to others. For those who are sick and suffering, grant your continued presence and healing according to your will. 
Lord, especially we lift up to you um, our Robert Heffel, uh, recovering from burst appendix, and uh, Harry Greats, recovering from surgery, and Diane Eulin and Mike Eulin, Gail Johansson, and Linda Gronwald sisters, Diane and Darlene. Lord, we ask you to be with them. You are the great physician of, of soul and body, and we entrust them into your hands. We also lift up to you a uh, family of Lynetta Colbert and uh, Josh Collins as they mourn their loved one's deaths. Grant them your peace and your presence. Be with uh, Nathan Bryant, serving in the military in the Middle East at this time. Lord, we ask grant patience in trials, peace in afflictions, and hope in your promises now and eternally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also give you uh, thanksgiving for um, Joyce Erickson's granddaughter who re returned from deployment safely in the Navy. We thank you for uh, Dennis doing well after his stroke. Thank you for the triumph of over death, over death and granting your peace and presence to the families of Polly Hoffman, Ethan Grimes, and Virginia Brainerd. And for many other things, O oh Lord, we give you our thanksgiving and praise. In your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The, the Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance 
of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always. We share the peace at this time. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he, he is good, and his mercy endure forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the solitary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you, and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Thank you.